Good day everyone. Today we will be looking at how to differentiate inverse trig functions. How to differentiate inverse trig functions. Uh, we have learnt or we have done a lot on trig functions. Then now we want to look at the inverse of the trig functions. So the first question I have here is if y is equal to sine inverse of x with sine inverse of s find the y over dx find the y over dx that is the first question we have here so let's look at how this is done what will be the solution to this the solution will be the first thing that if we are saying y is equal to the sine inverse at sine of x indirectly you can record this statement or you can restate the statement as x is equal to sine y. You can do it this way. As x is equal to sine y. So if I'm telling you that y is equal to sine inverse of x, I'm indirectly telling you that x is equal to sine y. That's what I mean. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's inverse of each other. It's something like a reverse of each other. Okay. So remember, if we have to like this, if I'm telling you that, uh, if I say something like 0.5 is equal to uh, sine x, it's equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.5, the same way. I'm telling you y is equal to sine inverse of x. It means that x is also equal to sine y without inverse. So, the variation both sides, the x, the to y, we're going to have, the variation to y, we're going to have cos y. That's why we will have it, cos y. Then, you can see it's over 1. Then, we're looking for the 1 over the s, not the s over the y. Don't take the reciprocal or the inverse of both sides, bring it wide up, you bring your s down, bring the y up, then you bring the s down, the same thing, bring this one up, then you bring this cos y down. So the one by the s, if you mind, that will be equal to 1 over cos y, 1 over cos y. But the problem is, there is no y, y is not the function of y here, so the answer cannot be a function of y. The answer cannot be a function of x. No proper. Because the question is a function of x. The answer should be a function of x. So how are we going to do that to get the answer to a function of x? We're going to recall something from. We are going to recall something from a trig identity. It's so called trig identity. Trig is a derivative for trigonometry. Trigonometry. Now trigonometry has identity. Of number one. Now we're going to look at what the identity that relates, what identity relates sine and cos together. One of them is that cos square y plus sine square y should be equal to one from trig identity. You can first say cos square theta plus sine square theta is equal to one. So as far as this Theta or y is acting as an angle to the cos or sine, the uh, identity is valid. I can say cos square x plus sine square x is equal to 1 is valid. I can say cos square a plus sine square a is equal to 1. Anything can replace, replace that theta. As far as this theta and this one, they are the same thing. If this one is b, this one will be b, this one is c, this one will be k. As far as what is here, what is here, they are the same. The identity or the relation is valid. So from here, we can opt out this term. Uh, uh, cos y by making cos the, the subject of the formula. Let's do cos square y will be equal to 1 if this one plus this sign plus cos this sign which is minus sine square y. That's what we're going to do. Then uh, the next thing we're going to do we're going to take we're going to take the square root of both sides so that this square will be programming for cos y not cos square y. We also take the square root of this other side the square root of this other side, then this square root will cancel this. Our cos y will be equal to the square root of 1 minus sine square y. But from this place, it said x is equal to sine y. You're thinking about x is the same thing as sine y. We can say this one is the same thing as the square root of 1 minus sine y. Everything is part 2. It's possible. Possible. If I have sine y to this part, it's integer sine square y. So that the answer can, so that this can be cos y is equal to the square root of uh, 
one minus since okay or let us let's let's bring back our first so we know what we're doing so we know what we're doing remember the over the x the over the x equals to one over cos y cos y and uh, cos y is simply as what that is square root of one minus sine y square and x is simply as sine y you can now see that is one over one minus s square because sine y is equal to x square you put s in you have s square it's your final final answer so let's look at the question like if y is equal to sine inverse of 2x find dy over dx find dy over dx so you can see 2x same thing as sine y they come from that angle then you get the answer there's another approach i will also show you if you still use the approach you still will get the answer perfectly perfectly without any delay without any delay so let's look at something here but well, look at let's come from chain rule let's come from chain rule okay let's come from, let's come from chain rule then because it lets 2s this is not just let me go to you from chain rule because it lets let me go to you so is that our du over dx will be 2 so our du over dx will be 2 and we can say the equation will now be equal to sine inverse of u because we let 2s equal to u then our d, if we differentiate u then we are going to differentiate u u equal to 2 then what about dy? what about dy over du? dy over du you know we equal to what? we are going to differentiate this over to this u then as we differentiate this to get this answer if this x is not u now, what will be the answer? the answer will be the same 1 over the square root of 1 minus but this x will not be u square remember, if this one is s, if you change it to be the square and 1 over the square root of 1 minus s square plus u you also replace the s with u but it be dy by the u, not dy by the s this time then the next the dy from j root over the s will not be equal to dy over the x dy over the u times the u over the x and that will be equal to what is the over the u? 1 over the square root of 1 minus u square times what is the u over the x? 2. So 2 times 1, that will be 2. The square root of 1 minus u square. So that will give us 2 over the square root of 1 minus what is u? Our u is same thing as 2x. So we place it to 2x and square it. That will give us the uh, 1 over the s will be equal to 2 over the square root of 1 minus 4 uh, squared. So we find answer to that problem. 2 over the square root of 1 minus 4 s squared. So please, that is just uh, question 2. I don't know if we can add another question to this. Okay, let's look at another question. Let's look at another question to this. Let's look at another question. Let's look at another question. 3. If y is equal to let's see, the sine inverse of 6x, what will be the y over the x? What will be y over the x? What will be y over the x? For that, we can try that up to see if we can actually solve that problem. The over the x will be, we don't be far from. Now, let me give you a shortcut to get the answer directly without going to this uh, work it. We give you a shortcut to get the answer directly from the question. Look at the shortcut. What we are going to do? We already know that. We already know that. If y is equal to, we, we are aware. We are aware that we should be aware that if y is equal to sine inverse of x, then dy over the s will be equal to one over the square root of one minus s squared. Should be aware of this. It's very important. Then if we have y to be equal to sine inverse of 6x your dy over dx must be look at it the first thing i'm going to do look at this one let me explain this formula in another way this one is constant remember we got it from when we're doing uh, 
for square s and sin square s, then it was equal to one. That is one we have here. But what about this other one? That other one can be tend to be the differentiation or the derivative of s. The derivative of x. Because if you differentiate x, let's say you are going to have that one. Let me go to have that one. That's where that one is coming from. You can take it that one. So that if you want to get this numerator, you must differentiate what is acting as an angle to the sine inverse. For example, now, if you want to get the, 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 the numerator of this question, I'll differentiate this 6s. Differentiating 6s, because this 6s is now acting as s, that will be 6 over the square root of 1 minus. Am I going to use s squared? No, I'll still use the same 6x. Then if I will now square it. So that everything will now be 6 over the square root of 1 minus 36s squared. Simple as ABC. If you try that out later, you see what I'm doing. Okay, let's try that question. So that's what I'm trying to see. Let's try that question. Let's see it. Then, number four. Let's try, let's repeat this question too. If y is equal to sine inverse of 2x, it says the row about the x must be differentiate 2x. You have to. The square root of 1 minus what I'm going to do there, not s squared, we use 2x, but 2x is what is here. So you square it. So give you 2 over the square root of 1 minus 4s squared. Answer. This answer is, I didn't know this thing, they are the same. So this is part of the stuff you need to get, you need to grab. You need to grab. So uh, we can say generally, we can say generally, we can say generally, therefore, if y is equal to the sine inverse of a function of x, dy over ds will be equal to the f prime of that function divided by 1 over the function of x raised to power 2. You can say this is very valid. This is very valid. Let's look at the question 5. Look at another question 5. If y is equal to, let's say, uh, uh, sine x of 1 plus 3x to 3s dy over ds will be equal to over ds will be equal to differentiate 1 plus 3 differentiating 1 that is 0 plus the 3s because f prime of s means the prevalent we're doing uh, y prime prime of this means differentiate it differentiate this what you have here differentiate this what you have here differentiating 1 that's 0 differentiate here of s 3s will have 3 over the square of 1 minus 1 plus 3 S and square T. And it was T over the square root of 1 minus 1 plus T S squared. So you can decide to open the bracket and decide to leave the answer this way. Let's leave the answer this way. But I'm going to put the bracket for you, that's why I see how to open brackets. So you have to open brackets. In the article to do it in a very short way. Very short to all. Let me just use a very long method to do it. So we have T over the square root of 1 minus because of time because of time you can you can do this you can say 1 minus 3x you can do this way you can, you can do this way you can do this this way this 1 minus that is plus 3x uh, square can be equal to 1 plus 3x times another 1 plus 3x 1 times 1 will be 1 1 times 3 will be 3x 3 times uh, 3x times 1 will be 3x and 3x and 3x will be 9x squared. That will be 1 plus 6x plus 9s squared. I can do it this way, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it. All that short way to expand a, a binomial that is having power to be 2. Look at how to do it. What we are going to have will be, look at what we are going to have will be, this 1 raised to power, this 2 that is there, that's 1 squared, plus that sign plus 2 times 1, that is 2 times this power times this first term and ten there times one times this second to uh, ten three x then plus three s there is power two d two i is going to be one is power two plus because that if it's minus that that also be minus plus two times one times three s then plus not without this plus that that the the the, 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 the ten term will be positive plus 3s to the power 2. That's what I'm going to be having. So that the final answer, you take this sheet, the final answer will be, the final answer will be equal to, the final answer will be equal to, theory over 
the square root of 1 minus as 1, 1 minus 1, 2 times this term, that is 6x, 2 times 3, that is 6x, plus 3 square will be 9, and x square will be uh, square. Remember that? Remember what we got before in this case, it's still the same thing. Therefore, we'll be having the square root of open, opening the brackets, like minus times y, minus times, minus times any plus will be minus, will be minus. So 1 minus 1, we are going to be having 6 x plus 9 x squared. That will be the answer to that. That will be the answer to that. You can also say, this is at least 3 is common. That's what I'm talking about. It is but you cannot bring out the thing because the square root. Uh, that's why you should not give the answer. That's good. That's why you don't this minus. So this is also negative. Both of them are negative. Sorry about that. Both of them are negative. Negative 6. Negative 9 x squared. So please, we're going to draw the cut in here. And you can also try this. You can also try this. Let's see number question 4 now. If y, question 4p. If y is equal to, let's say, sine inverse of 4s. You have a dx will be equal to uh, 4 over the square root of 1 minus 16 s squared. You can do more from your first uh, Facebook. God bless you. See you guys in the next class.